Hello, Johnson County 4-H'ers. Bryce McKenzie here. I'm in the extension office right now, uh, doing some final preps for the beef selection clinic tonight. Obviously, there are some activities and some school sports going on that a lot of you guys won't be able to attend uh, tonight's little clinic session. So I got on here today to make this recording to give you guys a basic, basic run through what we're gonna cover tonight. And as always, our office hours now are winter hours, so it's eight to five. Come in, stop by, call us anytime. Uh, and if you guys want to learn more, or stop in and talk about this, this PowerPoint that I'm going to give you a basic run through of, we'd love to hear from you. But let's go ahead and, and dive in here and give you guys an opportunity to see what those guys are going to see tonight. So beef selection. Okay. Uh, we're going to talk about some things to look for in young cattle. Uh, when you're going out and picking them for your next 4-H project. So tonight I'll ask the kids that are here, uh, what do you want to learn? And you guys don't have the luxury of answering that right now, uh, but we're going to try to cover some things that, that you possibly want to learn. That'll be the nice thing for the kids that are here is, is they'll be able to say, oh, we want to learn this and we can dive in deeper and cover it. But before we start talking about what to look for in, in young livestock, young cattle specifically, there's some things we need to do, and I think that is defining goals. You need to know what your end goal is, right? Are you wanting to buy a steer to try to make money on? Do you want to be a cattle person? That's the next question. Uh, if you're looking at breeding stock, there's definitely some potential to take those home and start your own cow herd. Maybe you want to uh, you know, improve the cow herd that you already have, and those are some things that you want to focus on. But I think that's a nice question is, do you want to be a cattle person? Uh, if you do, maybe look at the breeding side of things. And then, of course, are you chasing banners and buckles? And there's nothing wrong with that either. Uh, me and my family did. We were pretty heavy in the show industry, and, and we still are, and that's absolutely fine to do that. And then I think the next category you need to focus on is what level do you want to do this at? Uh, do you want to just show at county fair? Do you want to go to just some local jackpots? Maybe you want to show across the state or go try to win state fair? Or do you want to go nationwide? Um, and I can tell you that my family and I showed across the nation and some of our best memories as a family are from those experiences. The sights we got to see and the things we got to do were very, very neat things. And then lastly, I think financial investment is a great question to ask yourself. Um, what commitment do you want to make to this financially? Uh, when we start talking about livestock, there's always risk in terms of feeding, losing them. Uh, there's so many risk factors involved. So how much do you want to spend is a great, great first question to ask yourself. So let's go ahead and, and start. So knowing priorities. Priorities at this stage of the game, I think, break into some easy categories. We're talking about breeding cattle, and like I said earlier, we're going to focus on heifers today because those are probably what's most common in the show ring, uh, here anyway. We know some kids that are pulling bulls in the show ring, and that's okay too, but uh, we'll just focus on heifers right now. Uh, first and foremost, both heifers, steers, whatever you want to look at, structure. When they're young and they're green, we have to focus on their structure. They have to be good enough built to carry what they're going to be older, and they have to be good enough built to last. And I tell you what, that is just by far the most important thing to focus on. Second thing in heifers is I think uh, femininity and their maternal look and some production. And so that's, you know, their head and neck, what the shape of their head is, how feminine they, they look about their head, and then their muscle shape and pattern I think needs to be feminine. And then as we start talking about maternal, we need to look at their their rib and their flank and, and some different things like hooks to pin when you get behind them and how wide they need to be uh, to make a good, good cow down the road. And then balance and eye appeal. We don't want to look like we took two cows and stuffed them together to make one, right? They have to, they have, to have the same front third uh, that reads correct to their rear third. And then they need, need to have the, the, a middle that looks like it goes on them too. And then eye appeal, I think when you step back and look at them, they need to be able, be able to catch your eye, not only in the show ring, but also in the pasture. Then you'll notice that it says consider their breed and age. Uh, I think that, uh, you know, ages can affect uh, how heifers look. Uh, you can show a yearling heifer coming two year old and you can also show a heifer calf. So I think the, 
the age range is, is drastic as you start comparing cattle and then considering the breed. Uh, a Brahma is going to look way different than an Angus and they're going to look both different than a Gelby will. So you need to consider those things and, and do some research into what breeds you're looking at and what the ideal is for those breeds. So market cattle, like we said, structure, I mean, you're buying them anywhere from five to 900 pounds and you're trying to end goal them at 13 to 1400 pounds and they need to be built to, to carry that muscle and that finish. And they need to be able to carry that extra weight that they're gonna put on by the time they're ready to go. And then structure beyond that is how wide are they at the base? You know, we start livestock at the ground. You know, they gotta be opened up underneath and square enough and, and have enough frame and width to be able to pack extra muscle and things on. And then obviously that rolls right into muscle. They need to have enough muscle shape, enough power and, and enough look and, and just in terms of how their muscle is. It's like if you look at the steer here on this bottom right hand picture, that one's got a big, big turn to his round and he actually carries down into this lower quarter. Sure, he's young, but that one's got a lot of muscle shape. And then balance and eye appeal, same thing as we were talking in heifers. They gotta look like a complete package. We can't take a, a big fronted one and a little buttered one and put them together. They aren't gonna look right. They don't balance right. And then down the road, you'll hear some things that a judge will say of fat steer look or fat cattle basics. And we need to check those boxes off here at this stage of the game. Fat cattle basics is the width of their structure, you know, their muscle shape and, and their design and, and how balanced they are and, and their rib shape. I mean, there's just so many things that we need to check boxes off at this stage of the game so that when we feed them down the road, they can just be a bigger version of what you're buying now. And that all starts with structure. So if we start just talking about structure, let's just go ahead and take a look at these two. If we look at the bull here on the left, Super nice angle to his shoulder, and it's a relatively short shoulder. Look at the front leg, there's a nice backward set to that knee. That one reads very nice in terms of its front third. Then top line, he's nice and level down his top, but it still has a little bit of give right there. He looks like he's gonna be kind of soft, not like he's swamp backed or anything, but he's a soft, kind of forgiving top line. When he gets out and goes, I doubt that one picks his spine up and gets too rigid. He just looks like he's going to remain level topped and have some, some nice sway there and just as he gets out and goes. Then if we read his back leg structure, if we look for a hook bone and a pin bone, that one's pretty darn level hip. Then he still has a nice angle to his hock here. Still has a really nice set to his hock. You can see it on that off leg as well. And then I actually read his pasterns to be really, really nice. Looks like he has some give down there in his pastern but he's still upright and strong in him. I think that bull checks a lot of boxes off as far as structure. Then if we look here and try to think about the, the distance between his feet, I bet that one's opened up from underneath and, and really square just as he gets out and goes. And, and that's one major thing to consider. Now let's look at this dude on the right. I think this thing here is, if you look at the head and neck on this one and where that ties in compared to this bull here on the left, his head and neck attaches to the top side of this shoulder. Oh, excuse me. Whereas this guy on the right ties into the middle of his shoulder. So his front thirds all rock too much forward. And you can see that right here, if we draw an imaginary line, his shoulder's pretty long and straight. And he reads that way from the ground too. He looks like he might be pretty level hipped, maybe a little rounder, but he looks like he's straight. And he looks like he's kind of upright, just down low. If we look at the distance between feet, doesn't look like he's got a lot of width and he's really opened up from underneath. There's some things that we need to change about this one down his top line as well. Super level, that's a great, great term for him. But that one's gonna be too rigid and tight in his spine. And that's what I'm talking about is having some give here on this bull on the left. So if we can start checking those boxes off and making them built like this guy on the left, I bet they're gonna be built to last. Whereas the one on the right, that's a harder doing one. That's going to just be harder to get the middle in, going to be harder to put that much, that much muscle and mass on as he gets to going down the road. So that's number one for breeding and market cattle structure. Number two for heifers is femininity and maternal qualities. So like I said, uh, consider age and breeds, right? These two are different ages. They're obviously different breeds. Uh, this gal here on the left, her head and neck attachment is super high, but her throat latch and her, her neck shape 
She's kind of a choke-throated gal, and her head just kind of reads more like a steer. And then if you look at her from back here, the shape to this one's muscle looks like it's going to be big, big, and stout. And I think this one just reads to be more terminal, more like a market heifer, really. And then if we look here, she wants to come up in her flank. Obviously, that'll drop with some feet. I don't think she's terribly bad flanked. But then there's some things that really kind of concern me here. If we start talking about her top line, you can see that here her hip comes up in her. She looks like she's pretty tight topped. And then her forerib, she looks like she's bigger at the point of her shoulder than her forerib. And so that's one, one kind of a dock for her there in terms of her maternal quality. And she just looks more terminal. If we look at this gal on the right, She's obviously bigger in her throat last, but I still still think if we just evaluate her, cut her off right here and look at her head, I think her head's still feminine enough. I think she attaches that the top side of her neck isn't gonna be near as crusty as I think this one will with feet. I think her head and neck look right and, and that's a really nice piece for her. Then you get in here, the length of her shoulder and the point of her shoulder are shorter and cleaner than this one here on the left. So that's a plus four there. If you read this one's full rib, she looks like she's big, bold, and round. Then beyond that, she carries back deeper into her flank. So her rear rib to flank, the sweep there is, is what a lot of judges will call that. I think the one on the right is gonna be more ideal. Then if we start evaluating this one from hook to pin, and then again, going back to structure on base width, I think hook to pin, this one's gonna be wider and bolder, but I actually think this one is, is leveler out through here than the one on the left. I think this one on the left gives some slope. So there's another point for her. And then we start evaluating muscle shape. This one doesn't have near the turn to her round that the, the heifer on the left does. I think she's more feminine muscle. She's longer, flatter muscled. This one here on the right, in my mind, makes a better breeding heifer. The one on the left makes a better market heifer. So there again, define your goals. Uh, you know, what do you want to A, raise? What do you want to, what, uh, you know, what class do you want to get into when you're showing? Those are some things to consider. Number two in steers his muscle, right? So if we just look at these two, obviously they're way closer to their endpoints than the stuff that you're going to be buying is, but let's just evaluate muscle. Steer here on the left. If you look down his top, he looks very, like he looks like when you get over the top of him, he's going to be very big topped, very three-dimensional. You look at his forearm, that guy's big, big forearm. He's big round middle. He's good depth of body. He's a big stifled critter and he's got enough shape and turn to his leg. That one just reads big everywhere. His feet and his legs are big. His forearms big, big middled, big butted. That one's pretty good just in terms of how he has muscle. This guy on the right, not so much. He's pretty flat in terms of he's round. He looks like he's pretty narrow based. He's not going to be opened up and that's one of the main reasons this guy doesn't have the muscle the one on the left does is he closes up underneath. We come back to that structure is that one's not opened up enough to carry enough. And if you look at this one's forearm, you can see he has a little bit of shape, but it's, it's pretty flat. Whereas this guy on the right, you can see that big bulge there. That is one basic place to look for, for muscle in, in cattle and in all livestock, really. If you look at this one's rib, he looks like he cuts up here. He's pretty tight and he's hard. He doesn't look like he's near as big back and shapely as the one on the left. So when we're looking at him young, think of this guy without all the, the fancy hair and that one without all the, the fat on him. That one is still going to be way bigger muscle than this guy on the right, right? So that's the next thing to consider. So let's start talking about balance and eye appeal. Like I said, you don't want to make two different cattle be on the same, same one. Their head and neck and their shoulder need to look like they match the butt on them. This heifer here on the left, if you look at the length of her shoulder and the depth of her chest and how big her head is, and you compare the size of all of this right here that I'm circling with the mouse, I don't know if you can see it, but if you look at all of that in the front third, and then look at this back here in the round in her hip, that looks like two completely different cattle. If I, I wonder if I can highlight here. No, I can. So if we look at, oh, that's not a very good color. Sorry, guys. Let's just do black. If we look here, the size of all of this versus the size of all of this, that looks like two completely different cattle stuck together. And if you look at the length here 
versus the length here, that one's way shorter hip than she is in her front third. That one just needs fixed, right? If we could take this head and put her head back here, she'd be a lot better off. We want them to feed back deeper. Whereas this one's underline cuts back up. That's exactly opposite of how we want them. Her head and neck attachment's right here in the middle of her, right here in the middle of her shoulder. Okay, if we look at her head and neck, it attaches right here in the middle. And we want that head and neck to attach here at the top side of the shoulder. Okay, so that one, just as far as eye appeal, when you're out in the pasture or you're out in the show ring, that one's just not gonna look near as good as this gal here on the right. Okay, and those are, those are the reasons why. This gal here on the right, her eye appeal, she strikes you as the one to look at, right? If you look at the length of her hip, the length of her shoulder, She's pretty darn even. You look at this size here, and then you look at the size over here, they're almost even. I mean, that gal balances up super nicely. Super, super nice. And then her head and neck attachment. Look how it sets at the top side of that shoulder. I'm gonna get rid of the rest of this ink, but I'm gonna just compare these two, okay? Top side of that shoulder versus the middle of that one's shoulder, okay? This gal here on the right is absolutely the better of the two in eye appeal. So let's go back to structure and let's go back to maternal qualities. This one here, big bold ribbed, looks like it's round. This one here, the center portion of her body is the biggest part of her. Whereas this gal here, she might honestly be bigger here. And that's absolutely fine. If we can get them to feed bigger from the front to back and have this kind of angle where they come down into a deep flank, that lower turn of the body, you're way better off. And then beyond that, she's feminine in terms of her muscle shape. Her head and neck attachment are super feminine. Like I said, her shoulder, this one here, is super nice just in terms of how she's built. If we just start imagining how these lines are in this one, right? There she is. Whereas this one, not near as good, right? As we start evaluating them here, I think, uh, it's tough for, tough for me to draw that, but if we start looking at them in, in those lines, structure-wise, this gal beats this gal all day of the week. And then internal quality, this one is more feminine in terms of her muscle shape, her head and neck. She's more maternal in the center portion of her body. And then this gal here, she just needs some help. And that's just, just how it is. So I think things to consider for you guys as we're um, looking at this is uh, major factors of buying livestock. There are a bunch of them. Obviously, you know, risk and financial investments, but I think you need to know who you're buying them from, right? A lot of breeders have reputations that precede them. Uh, they can be known as the guy who photoshops their pictures. They can be known as the guy that, you know, doesn't sell you the one that you thought you bought online. Or they can be really, really good people that are there to help you every step of the way. And in my mind, there are more of those good people than there are the bad. Um, but if you guys apply structure, muscle, maternal qualities, if you guys evaluate livestock for what they are, you can take a lot of that risk out of it, of, of the reputation of the buyer, of the breeder, excuse me because you know what you're looking for and what a good one is. Now in that same regard, I think there's a lot of better people than there are bad in this world and the breeders often know best. And especially you guys as 4-H or FFA age kids, those breeders are gonna help you every step of the way that they can because they know that you're the next generation yet. So one thing I'd tell you is to ask your breeders and do not be afraid to ask them any kind of question. What they feed, what their mom and dad were like, uh, what they expect the end weight to be of your steer or how big they expect your heifer to get. When I'm selling kids livestock, I tell you what, I am able to tell you what my end goal is for those critters because I fed their mothers or their dads or their brothers and sisters. And I have a basic idea of what those are going to be when they're done. Do not be afraid to ask your questions to a breeder because they are there to help you. They know the animal probably better than anyone. And then stay in contact. Please, please, please stay in contact with your breeder. Send them updates. Ask them questions as you're feeding them along. You know, if, if you think, oh, well, I don't know if, it, if this one's getting enough flank, what can I do to fix that? 
stay in contact with your breeder and ask them that. And this quote kind of follows that. He who asks a question remains a fool for five minutes. He who does not ask remains a fool forever, right? And I think if you keep asking your breeders those questions, or if you have questions, if you want to come grab me and we go out and look at livestock, or we go out and, and look at the stuff you're feeding, <laughs> I tell you what, you'll be better off by learning about it and applying that in the future than you will be if you go into a blind. So at the end of this, uh, at the end of this discussion in clinic, I love to ask, you know, what are the questions so I can go back and cover whatever you guys are missing. You guys don't have that luxury. But like I said, at the start of this thing, from eight to five, we're open, call, stop in, set an appointment with me and we'll go look at critters. We'll go look at livestock. We'll do whatever you need to do uh, to make things the best that it can be for you guys. So thanks for tuning in. Uh, thanks for, for watching this and and uh, hopefully it'll help you and, and give you some different places to learn things. Uh, we look forward to hearing from you soon. Good luck.